It's Monday, March 5th, 2012, a special edition of InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, a compilation of some of our most powerful special reports in the last eight months of InfoWars Nightly News. I'm in Austin, Texas on the UT campus. I've been asking students all day about the recently passed NDAA legislation. I was surprised to learn where the real denial is coming from. Just one look at mainstream news will make any rational thinker conclude that Americans are in a hyper state of denial. Public opinion is in a stranglehold when it comes to real, open, honest debate. Whether it's the looming war in Iran based on fear-mongering and little fact, or the blind eye given to Ron Paul's agenda to get the country back to its constitutional values. A new Suffolk University poll shows him with a commanding lead in New Hampshire at almost 30 points above his rivals. At the same time, Newt Gingrich and John Huntsman have faltered. Rick Santorum, who polls in single digits here, is looking to give Romney a run in the Granite State after his near victory in Iowa. Are people aware that they could be kidnapped, detained without trial, and sent away to a torture facility for an untimely death? simply based on the description of domestic terrorism? Denial comes in three forms, according to Sigmund Freud. Simple denial. Deny the reality of the unpleasant fact altogether. Do you feel like you get all the information you need from mainstream media? No, I don't. I hardly watch the news anyway. And I'm in a lying and deception class right now, and we talked about media and, like, news and how most of it is just... They take, like, the smallest thing possible. It's not a big deal. and blow it out of proportion so you at least feel like something important's going on when in fact like there are other things that could be covered that I mean they don't want to cover or they don't. Minimization. Admit the fact but deny its seriousness. Just wanted to ask you if you've heard about the NDAA legislation, the bill that allows the president to detain American citizens, whisk them away off to a torture facility and never be seen again that that's been legalized as of this year? Are you aware of this? Um, I actually have heard of that. That's like how they weren't going to close Guantanamo. That was like the legislation that like decided that, I believe. If you're labeled a domestic terrorist, which could include the fact that you're, you're missing fingers, that you bought beer at a store with cash, that uh, you bought baby formula, do you take that seriously or would you feel like, yes, that may be happening, but it's probably for a good reason? Um, because I don't know the details, like I want to say that it could possibly be for a good, a good reason. Projection. Admit both the fact and the seriousness, but deny responsibility. Once the war against Saddam begins, we expect every American to support our military, and if they can't do that, to shut up. Would you be more prone to say, yeah, that's happening, but there's nothing you can do about it? Um, I, I don't think that there's nothing that can be done. I think if enough people are informed about it, then the more people that are informed, the more people can, you know, have an input and say, and one voice, you know, adds to that change. So, I mean, what's, what's the entire point of this bill? Domestic terrorism, they want to they want to quiet their critics. We're, we represent the alternative media. Mainstream media didn't even cover NDAA. I, mean, I have an idea that, you know, the media is like, you know, sponsored by certain, you know, uh, political parties and also certain people with power within this country. And they don't allow certain information to be, you know, transmitted to the masses out of, you know, it just wouldn't be right for the, for the normal person psyche. <laughs> American citizens are distracted by a number of worthless, time-consuming outlets. We are all addicted to our own self-importance. The only way to begin to treat addiction, whether it is alcohol or drugs, for example, is to break the cycle of denial. The mainstream media delivers a skewed reality, manipulating the American landscape with their theater of denial. Isn't it amazing that we are denying our own slavery to a system fueled by that very denial. John Bound, InfoWars Nightly News.
Thousands of popular diet and sugar-free foods and beverages contain an artificial sweetener that researchers say may cause cancer. The ingredient is aspartame, and it is by far the most dangerous substance on the market that is added to our foods. Aspartame is an artificial sweetener found in thousands of products worldwide, and chances are you are consuming it. It's added to sugar-free gum, juice beverages, tabletop sweeteners like Equal and NutraSweet. It's in cereals, soft drinks, yogurt, breath mints, multivitamins, wine coolers, and even over-the-counter medicines. The toxic long-term effects of aspartame are often dismissed as a hoax by the sweetener industry. However, numerous independent controlled studies using human subjects have concluded that aspartame is deadly. Now there's a number of studies that claim that aspartame is completely safe to consume, but the vast majority of those studies were conducted by, well, you guessed it, the aspartame industry. In fact, groups like Monsanto, J.D. Searle, and ILSI concluded that aspartame posed no health risk. But that's about as credible as Marlboro, Camel, and Winston dismissing the link between cigarette smoking and cancer. Have you heard of aspartame? Um, yes, I've heard of it before. Have you heard good things or bad things? I hear mostly bad things about what it. What kind of bad things? Um, just like it's an artificial sweetener and it's bad for your health and you should try to stay away. I've heard it's an artificial sweetener and I'm guilty of drinking beverages sweetened with it. Uh, however, it degenerates and it does harmful things. What do you think about aspartame? I don't like it. It gives me headaches. They did studies on, on rats. Uh, it supposedly causes cancer. Even Fox News recently reported in 2005 that artificial sweeteners had been linked to a wide range of cancers after studying uh, involving rats. So these rats actually had tumors the size of golf balls. So does that concern you when you hear stuff like that? Greatly, yes. And the FDA is supposed to be protecting us from things like cancer, not giving it to us and, and telling us it's safe. You cannot go to the grocery store now and buy any type of even regular sugar gum that hasn't had aspartame added to it. In the 1970s, Searle tried to get it approved and they couldn't. It took them three separate times because in their own studies with monkeys, large portions of them that were fed it died and contracted cancer. Now we have mainstream news articles and the EU has done a major study finding lower birth weights, early birth, and yes, miscarriages from women that drink aspartame laden soft drinks like Coke Zero. Do you think that aspartame should be on the market today? No. Why not? Because it hasn't been demonstrated to be safe. The FDA looked at the research and in 1975 put aspartame's approval on hold. It set up an independent panel of doctors to study aspartame. In 1980, that public board of inquiry unanimously ruled aspartame should not go on the market. Edith was drinking a cup of low-calorie hot chocolate that night. Aspartame made it sweet. And Johnson says aspartame made her sick. All of a sudden, I couldn't see. My eyes went out of focus and it was like my vision became quite blurred. And you think it's because of aspartame? I think it's very deliberately because of aspartame, yes. It was terrifying. Kate Randall thought she was going crazy. I started popping in my hands and twitching in my feet, my legs, my knees, my upper legs and shoulders and arms and everywhere. Many of these individuals who have been aspartame reactors have tested themselves five, ten, twenty times every time getting the same response and then they realized that this was a legitimate cause and effect relationship. What is aspartame? It is the fecal matter of the E. coli bacteria. They took it and genetically engineered it. They can feed it toxic waste and then it defecates aspartame. And it has so many bad health effects, it's just unspeakable. How do you think a product like that was managed to be approved by the FDA? Oh, I think there's loopholes to everything. And I say shut the FDA down, shut down any government agency that's not doing its job. Would you think that possibly the FDA is corrupt? I, I'm going to go ahead and say no. I, I trust the FDA with, with my health. Do you think there's a chance the FDA could be corrupt? About as big a chance as any other part of our government. 
Now, the FDA approval of aspartame was highly contested and subject to multiple congressional hearings and scientific criticism. In fact, aspartame was continuously rejected by the FDA for over 15 years until it was finally approved in 1981. Since that time, the FDA has published a list of 92 symptoms of aspartame poisoning, which includes headaches, vision loss, including blindness, seizures, neurological problems, cardiovascular problems, and death. The FDA even admits adverse reactions to aspartame comprise about 80% of consumer complaints it receives each year. Yet the dangerous substance remains on the market and is consumed by millions of people every single day. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Let's take a Winston break. That's it. Winston is the one filter cigarette that delivers flavor 20 times a pack. Winston's got that filter blend. The Flintstones has been brought to you by Winston, America's best-selling, best-tasting filter cigarette. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. In a repeated national survey, doctors in all branches of medicine, doctors in all parts of the country were asked, what cigarette do you smoke, doctor? Once again, the brand named most was Camel. Yes, according to this repeated nationwide survey, more doctors smoke Camels than any other cigarette. Why not change to Camels for the next 30 days and see what a difference it makes in your smoking enjoyment? See how camels agree with your throat. See how mild and good tasting a cigarette can be. Last year, over two million people got something of a surprise in the mail. Their first taste of NutraSweet. In of all things, a gumball. What's NutraSweet? It's a sweetening ingredient that isn't fattening. A sweetening ingredient that isn't artificial like saccharin. Isn't bad for your teeth. Tastes just like sugar. And sounds just too good to be true. Banana plants don't make NutraSweet. Neither do cows. But they might as well. If you've had bananas and milk, you've eaten what's in NutraSweet. It's made from things like those found naturally in good things to eat. Like two building blocks of protein. Nature doesn't make NutraSweet, but NutraSweet couldn't be made without it. NutraSweet brand sweetener. Just look for the swirl. Is this the first time you've ever seen the mural? No, I'm actually, uh, I live here, so I come through and check it out every now and then. I'm taking pictures. I read about it on, on, online, looked it up. What do you think it means? Uh... I can only tell you what I was, what I read. Um, basically, it seems like uh, there's a soldier cutting through the dove of peace, and uh, his sword is an Arabian sword. Um, I'm not sure about the women and the angel type things, um, and the, uh, the the towers here very familiar to a lot of people. Kind of look like a uh, 911 towers. What a so. I don't know. Strange thing to have in this airport. What are your thoughts when you see something like this? Um, I think it's very well done. It's impactful. Um, color scheme's great. Theme seems a little austere for an airport, but... You don't think there's a nefarious hidden agenda, a hidden meaning behind it or anything like that? Yeah, I don't know. I've heard that theory a lot. Maybe, you know, the underground prisons under Denver or DIA, all that stuff. Could be. I'm a little skeptical. So this is the first time you've ever seen this mural? Yeah, the first time I've ever seen it. Let's take a look. I mean, what are your thoughts when you look at something like that? Do you think it's kind of an odd uh, mural to be put in an airport? or? Not necessarily. I think it explains a lot. Okay, such as? Such as just, you know, I mean, America and everything else. Um, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and it pretty, pretty much shows what's going on. You know, there's a night. He's taking care of things. There's people that are suffering, and he looks like he's taking over and taking care of it. So he's, he's like a protector, you think? I think, I think, I think he's a protector, you know? I mean, you're wearing a gas mask, and you have a sword in your hand. What else are you doing? <laughs> is this the first time you've ever seen the mural? Yes, it is. Uh, I've seen it on the Internet before. So, so, all right, so you've seen it on the Internet, and I saw you turn the corner, and you're like, oh, my God, here it is. So, all right, so uh, what are your thoughts on it? 
you know, I've things heard, about I've it. I've heard some theories where there's like an underground facility in this in this airport. It's just like really dark and kind of scary looking. It is like a little creepy Jesus. looking, yeah, yeah. Machine gun wielding. And the crying innocence in the background. Yeah, yeah it's kind of creepy. Like fleeing? That's, that's yeah. real creepy. Oh, it's just, I mean, this is kind of sad, obviously. Some, a kid who died in Auschwitz, 14 years old. Yeah. That, you know, basically their childhood was taken away from them through everything they went through, it looks like. You know, they hate, they hate enemies, they... They hope that one day they'll be able to wake up and laugh again. It's sad that there's people out there that think like that. Some people say it's put here to kind of get to distract people from really what really goes on in DIA. Don't you think it's an odd place to put a mural like this in a, an international airport? I mean, it's kind of weird, isn't it? It is. Like, uh, I mean, if you wanted to put, a, if you wanted to send a message to someone, I mean, it's kind of the best place. And so you think this is more of an artistic endeavor, you know, with the symbolism and everything? You know, this guy kind of looks like a Nazi, but um, is there any hidden meanings, a dark hidden meaning, or is this more kind of a artistic piece? You know? I think I don't. I'm not someone who looks at things in a dark, hidden type of th way, so to me, I don't look at it like that. You know, the most disturbing piece of this whole thing is just that. Yeah. That's what gets me the most. What about the rumors that there's a whole underground type of bunker here? Have you heard those as well? I heard those. Do you think the, uh, there's any truth to that? Definitely possible. More possible than what they give you on the news. It looks funny the way that you can see uh, when you're coming in. You can see that there's construction's been over for years here, but there's construction everywhere, all over, going on on the grounds of the airport. Constantly, constantly, and you can see them actually working up because once it's a hill and you have a road that goes around it, and you come back a year later and there's two roads because the hills kind of moved up, as if the hills are expanding upwards. You think it's an odd place to have a mural like this in an international airport? Absolutely, absolutely. I don't know what its place is here or why it's here. Um, it's definitely not something you expect to see walking through an airport, though. So. Insider documents recently obtained by InfoWars reveal the current and ongoing operations to staff FEMA and U.S. Army camps inside the U.S. According to our sources, KBR is contracting services for temporary fencing and barricades, along with other services required for temporary emergency environment camps. They're to be located in five regions of the United States. Now this comes immediately after the Senate passed the National Defense Authorization Act, which allows indefinite detention of American citizens. All this at a time when economic conditions and mass demonstrations sweep through the country and threaten potential unrest. The government has patiently put into place the crucial elements of its police state grid and plan for the internment of political enemies. We are literally one false flag terror attack away from the plan going live. As the Department of Homeland Security and establishment media keep telling us, the next terror event will be on American soil and carried out by domestic patriot political groups, not Al-Qaeda. The FBI and the CIA have a long history of creating domestic terrorists, you know, patsies, and shifting the blame over to their political enemies. It's all there. All the government documents, all the government admissions, a civilian inmate labor camp program, run by the army, where they're at, all the details down to how they're gonna break the families up and where the children go and the forced inoculations and everything. I mean, it just boggles the mind that all of this is happening. The fact that detention camps are being constructed inside our country and are now being staffed and readied for emergency situations, what can no longer be ignored or ridiculed as a conspiracy theory. Senate committee hearings and official Homeland Security documents further illustrate the mindset of our federal government as they classify homeschoolers, gun rights activists, constitutionalists, and returning veterans as potential terrorists. By default, creating an entire nation of radicals and revolutionaries, where everyone is a suspect, equally guilty until proven otherwise. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. The global banking cartel has used one tried and true process to create wars, rob us of our currency, and eat away at our substance. This process of control over the masses is called the Hegelian dialectic. So what is it, and how is it being used today? 
German philosopher George Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel devised a dialectic or method to resolve a disagreement between outcomes. The dialectic is made up of three attributes, thesis, an idea or opinion, antithesis, the opposite idea or opinion, and synthesis, the alchemic process to bring together a wanted change. It is commonly referred to as order out of chaos and is waged against the masses in many forms. Saul Alinsky, self-avowed Marxist, proponent of the Hegelian dialectic, published this in Rules for Radicals. Any revolutionary change must be preceded by a passive, affirmative, non-challenging attitude toward change among the mass of our people. They must feel so frustrated, so defeated, so lost, so futureless in the prevailing system that they're willing to let go of the past and chance the future. George Bush became the hero of 9-11 simply due to the fact that he was the president and then rammed through legislation that threatened our liberties as we all complacently stood by and allowed it to happen. A manufactured crisis occurs, thesis. George Bush answers it by rallying public opinion and becoming the host of the tragedy, antithesis thus owning the crisis through synthesis. Equilibrium is attained. All of the once separate parts of the plan are joined together. In this example, the Patriot Act acting as the equilibrium on the desired road to tyrannical fascism in America. They're too good at what they're doing. They create the crisis on record. They sell the fraud. Then they say, give us more power. Give up your sovereignty, Europe, America, and we'll fix it. But then it only implodes faster. They make bigger bonuses but they're destroying their own golden goose. They're hacking it open greedily when it's giving them a golden egg every morning. They think there's eggs inside. Uh, I, I think the point you made of that, because the, they're on record creating this to consolidate power, they've bragged about it. Uh, you know, those, those memos have been made public by Goldman Sachs and others, but they're gonna fry things so badly, the bankers are all running to private islands with their own security teams. I mean, like th th they want to rule everything so much and have just so many digits in their bank accounts that they're going to devalue the value of the digits through their sheer greed. That is a possibility. And if you look at the Hegelian dialectic, uh, if that, that crisis at the beginning spins out of control, uh, they lose the tail end of the dialectic, don't they? Uh, there will be no synthesis at the end. They'll be lucky if they survive. Another method to manipulate the masses is the use of two opposing views to attain the desired view. Politician A espouses the first view. Politician B counters with the differing view. A clear example of this was the debate over the unconstitutional NDAA bill of 2012. I strongly believe that the United States government should not have the ability to lock away its citizens for years and perhaps decades without charging them and providing a heightened level of due pro process. We don't pick up citizens. We don't incarcerate them for 10 or 15 or 20 years or until hostilities end and no one knows when they will end without giving them due process of law. The great concern that we have now in terms of the security of the homeland uh, is from so-called uh, homegrown terrorists, radicalized Americans. So uh, these people, in my opinion, have, have uh, taken sides. They've joined the enemy. And uh, to have this body at this time as the threat of homegrown terrorism rises, say no, they can't be treated as enemy combatants, uh, it, it is not, not only doesn't make sense and, and is uh, uh, totally uh, um, uh, unresponsive to the facts that I've just described. President Obama threatened to veto the bill as long as it contained the section concerning due process and then quickly changed his mind before the final version was voted through Congress. Obama then told the media that the version he had signed was revised to eliminate any threat to freedom of American citizens, even though this was not true, and the bill gives extraordinary powers to detain American citizens without a trial. The media, 
synthesized Obama's lie by claiming that Obama will not use the powers he now has. The desired result is synthesized by mainstream media as they turn a blind eye to the debate. The American people cave into the lie because the process it is attached to seems so familiar. John Bound, InfoWars Nightly News. The National Defense Authorization Act empowers the U.S. military to operate on American soil. They can arrest American citizens and cart them off to detention centers anywhere in the world basically turning the entire homeland into a battlefield and allowing the military to arrest individuals and detain them indefinitely without trial. Now this violates every aspect of a free society by denying Americans their constitutionally protected right to due process. How do you think the average American is gonna respond? The same way they responded at the Kent State Massacre when uh, National Guard troops were used to fire live ammunition on students who were nonviolently protesting the Vietnam War. Uh, the American public was outraged. The military is here to defend us, not to prosecute us and arrest us and throw us in jail. I think it's a sneak attack by Congress and people to, you know, counter the movement on Wall Street. These people are saying that the passing of the bill, basically it means to them that the Rubicon has been crossed that uh, this means America will become complete and possibly irreversible uh, totalitarian military state. Well, then our only hope is some defective armed force members. I think that's our only chance is the military needs to enforce our Constitution and our congressmen are trampling over the rules that were established over 200 years ago. And that's the whole problem. There's too much corruption in the executive branch and in the congressional. What would you say to active military who, are, who might be told to enforce this bill? Listen, I'm a, I'm a veteran of the United States Army, 31 uniform, airborne. And I, I'll tell you what, very simply we take an oath to protect this country from threats both foreign and domestic. It's not good, it's not healthy for our democracy, for the American Army to be involved. For those people who say that, oh, it could never happen here, it could never happen to us, uh, those are called the famous last words. Uh, many times throughout history, uh, situations have happened where governments have turned their military against its citizens. You know what? History repeats itself. If that eventuality does happen, we have to, you have to remind yourself that these are your brothers and sisters and neighbors and, and people you went to school with. And remember what you're truly fighting for. It's for our Constitution, not for these uh, puppets who are actually our servants who have run amok. Now, Stuart Rhodes, the founder of Oath Keepers, recently appeared on the InfoWars Nightly News, and he warned people that we are now at the point where all that will save liberty in America is another American revolution. But really, you should see this as, as a declaration of war against the American people. That's how we should see it. We need to stop this right now. If we don't, Alex, I do believe that there will be no recourse except another revolution. Otherwise, we are going to be lost. We will be put in the same position as the Founding Fathers were in 1775. I want to tell the military and police, the globalists are going to sit offshore and watch you get chewed up in a fight with the American people. Uh, it's very important that police and military really make a decision now which side they're going to be on. The military, you're right. Choose now whom you shall serve. Either you are, I'm talking to the military out there especially, either you are a son of the republic and you will defend the Bill of Rights and the Constitution, or you are a traitor to your country and you are nothing but a, but a lowly dog, an obedient dog to the powers that be. Choose now whom you shall serve. There's a lot of constitutionalists out there who are in such an uproar that they are saying that this bill places us in almost exactly the same position that our forefathers were in when they were forced to take up arms in defense of liberty in, back in 1775. Oh, well, to those people, I would say it's a culmination of things that have put us in that position. And I would agree that the architects, the great and highly intelligent architects, that uh, constructed our infrastructure, the way we do business and the way we do politics and, and the way we, we live uh, here in America, they would turn over in their graves and they would be, they would be very ashamed of us and, and how far we let this go.
Indefinite detention without due process leaves citizens without the legal protection of the Constitution, and it strikes at the very heart of the essence of U.S. law. It is positively shameful that any elected representative would even consider voting for such an assault on so sacred a fundamental value as the right to due process. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. What do you think is going to be the response of American citizens once they start seeing American troops on the street? I think that most people are going to be divided. I don't do anything wrong, so I don't have anything to fear, so I'm not afraid of the, the military. The military being on the streets of America, there's a new bill that's being passed. It's a great idea. I'm all for it. So you support uh, to fight terrorism, military on the streets? Of course, I do. So you think in order to fight terrorism that would uh, make you feel a little safer uh, seeing military on the street? Yeah. So I think the only people that are afraid of the military is people that commit crimes or, uh, you know, uh, that, that, uh, that are in criminal organizations. So. The destruction of the spirit of the people. We've seen racist accusations thrown at our leaders in the past. George Bush doesn't care about black people. But Barack Obama was supposed to be different. He was supposed to be a champion to all. But now we see that our participation in Libya and the current conflict is a direct correlation to the images you are about to see. Here we see the town of Tawurga and a massacre of the blacks that have lived there. Their hands were bound behind their backs and they were shot in the head. Black-run businesses are being burned all across Libya and blacks are being rounded up in the back of pickups and taken to prison camps. The dogs of war have been unleashed and we can expect to see more images of racist attacks on black Africans by Al-Qaeda-backed forces. The next time someone claims you're a racist for not supporting Obamacare, isn't the U.S. and NATO-backed genocide against black Africans the real racist agenda? Remember, Libya is not Bush's war. It was started by Barack Obama, a president who has roots in Africa and is using black cover to do the bidding of the new world order.